Hey, Paul Leone here again, your measurement expert at Hone. Uh, last two videos talked about why we measure. We talked a little bit about what we measure, right? The six levels, did they like it? Did they learn anything? Did they change their behavior in some way? Did they impact the business? Is that business impact big enough to offset the cost of the training? And then what are the ROI maximizers, right? What's happening back on the job that's helping or hindering them from applying the training? There's the whole six. I wanted to tell you in this video a little bit about how we collect that data, really bring it in to tell our story of impact. Uh, so first level, we use uh, after triggered after the classes, each of the classes. There's typically four to five classes in a hone experience. So after each of the classes, they'll get that level one, right? Did you like the facilitator? Were you satisfied, right? All the usual suspects, all that good stuff. Next one, level two, after the entire program, four or five classes, after the entire program is complete, we'll ask about that new knowledge gained, right? Um, and we'll find out there with that learning assessment question. The next level, which is pretty, which is a pretty big deal, is we have a manager assessment, right? A capability assessment where we actually do a 180. So we'll ask managers to talk about the improvements that they've seen in core behaviors. And then we also ask their direct reports, right? To create that 180, that multi-rater, to really corroborate whether those things are actually taking place. Who better to ask that, um, ask of that than the uh, direct reports, right? The people who are witnessing and observing these leader improvements if they're happening uh, every day, right? Um, that's our level three. For level four, we typically use one of, of three techniques. We could use a, if we can get a lot of data from the business and a HR metrics, we'll use a control group, almost like a drug study. We'll be looking the trained group versus the untrained group, almost like a drug versus a placebo. Uh, and we'll see if we could take some incremental credit, right? Is that trained group performing, improving uh, more than that placebo, placebo group or that untrained group? Right. Next one is the attribution technique. Uh, we'll get a whole bunch of data from the business and then we'll see what we could take credit for by literally asking participants how much would you attribute to the training. Right. And then the estimate technique, if we can hardly get our hands on any of the hard data from the business, we'll use this estimate technique where they're coming back and actually estimating how much performance improved for themselves or their teams. And then we'll turn that into a dollar value for level five. Right. So we really try to what I call isolate the impact of the training here. We don't take credit for everything that happens after the training. We really hone in on whether it's a control group, attribution or estimate technique. We really hone in on what impact can we really and truly attribute to the training program. Uh, if we find that benefit isolated, we'll put that against the cost of the training at level five, right? So we get we work with some of the finance people within our clients, um, companies. And then finally, at level six, we'll add a couple of questions to that uh, post-training assessment that asks about manager support. Did they take any sustainability stuff like practice labs, right? And then we'll do kind of a mini study, right? Are the trained people that went to practice labs and had manager support, are they getting more value and impact than uh, those who didn't? So that's how we collect our uh, six levels of training evaluation data. Uh, next video, final video, going to take you through a specific case study to show you some results for a great company called Zola.